Hello, and welcome to Faith Walk. I want to begin today by asking a simple question. Who is Jesus? Oh, I know it sounds like a simple question on the surface, and it sounds like one that at least for a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, it should be a simple one. However, it's not always so simple, is it? Who is he? Is he just a great man? Is he just a great teacher? Is he possibly just a great prophet? These are some of the questions swimming around in the minds of the people who encountered him while he was walking upon this earth. Even his own disciples were not always exactly sure how to answer that question. I want to share with you a reading from Matthew chapter 16 at a time when Jesus has already spent some time with his disciples teaching and preaching and performing miracles, but he pulls them aside in a bit of a retreat at Caesarea Philippi and here's where we pick up the reading. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, we read these words. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. You can almost feel the pride swelling within Peter as he realizes he has answered the question correctly. When asked who Jesus is, when asked about Jesus' identity, Peter is the one who boldly declares, I believe that you are the Messiah. You are the long-awaited promised one from the Father. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was a grand moment for Peter, and he's rewarded by Jesus' compliments when Jesus says, You are blessed because this knowledge, this understanding, has not been granted to you by men, but it comes strictly from God. Interestingly, however, when we read a little bit farther in that same chapter, I'm not sure exactly how much time has passed, but there comes another encounter between Jesus and Peter. Jesus, you see, begins setting his face toward Jerusalem. He realizes that his time on earth is short, that he's about to march to the cross to lay down his life for the sins and for the salvation of all mankind. And so when we pick up the reading in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, we read these words. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Boy, how quickly the tables have turned. From being the one that Jesus says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because this has not been revealed to you by men, but from God himself, to being the one that Jesus turns and says, Get behind me, Satan? And now you're thinking like men and not thinking like God? What is the difference? In this second incident, Peter started thinking about how he wanted to be in control. He didn't want to even talk about the possibility of Jesus dying. He wanted to make sure that he could wield his sword. He could do whatever he could to protect this Messiah, this long-awaited Son of God. You see, the difference is in the first scene, Peter realizes that God is in control, that God has sent this long-awaited promised Messiah. But in the second instance, Peter realizes or believes that he's in control, that he can defend Jesus, that he can keep Jesus from dying. And if he were to do so, he's acting on the part of Satan, He's acting on the part of humans, not on the part of God. It's interesting, isn't it? Because don't we find ourselves in the same dilemma? 
So many times in life, there are times when we believe and are willing to proclaim Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I know that whatever crisis I might face, no matter what the dilemma, I can just lay my burdens on him and he will care for me. I believe that God is in control and therefore I have nothing to worry about. And yet at other times, I start to wring my hands. I start to be anxious and worry. I start to see what I can do to control the situation. When I lean on God, I trust that he's in control. But when I try to control things myself, I'm thinking like men. I'm even thinking like Satan, not like God. Which are you today? Are you thinking like God or are you thinking like men? When you look at the crisis that surrounds you, when you decide how you're going to respond, do you think like God or do you think like men? Are you willing to let God be in control or do you try to control things yourself? I challenge you. I challenge me. Let's be people who lay our burdens at the foot of the cross and allow God to take care of us. Would you bow with me as we pray? Our Father, we're so thankful to know that you are not only hearing our prayer, but that you love us, that you care for us, and that you're willing to lead us through life. Father, we cast all of our cares on you today, knowing that you are the sovereign God in control of all things. We pray, Father, that you would erase our fears, that you would lift our burdens, that you would help us to feel the peace that passes all understanding that only you can give. And Father, as we feel and experience that peace, would you help us to share that peace with others along the way? It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us today.